Hi guys, in this video we're going to make Jack Skellington. So I'm making him out of modeling paste. I've used the Laped one here. You can use whichever modeling paste you prefer, but this one is pretty firm for this particular character. So I've got some black that's pre-dyed and I'm just rolling a long thin strip. I'm going to cut length of this for his legs and I'm just going to put a line down the center using the back of the knife. I'll do that on the front and back. And you can use a modeling tool to just go a little bit deeper with that line. Just trim a little bit off there. And I'm just going to run a wooden skewer through the middle just to give it a bit of extra support. So nobody's going to be eating this one. This one's purely for decoration. Take a little bit more of our black modeling paste and we're going to make two feet from that. So I'll roll a long piece, we'll cut it in half and we'll use these then for the feet. So let's try and position them underneath the legs. And I'm just going to give them a little push on. Now this particular modeling paste should just stick to itself. But if you're using something different, you might want to use some edible glue or water to just attach them together. And I've just got another small piece that we're going to drop down onto the top of those legs. Again in black, this will be part of the body. And then we'll put a little bit more onto the body in white. So again, just the same modeling paste. Cut out my shape so it's not quite a rectangle. So insert that onto the skewer. Then once that's on there, I'm going to roll a really thin strip of white that we're going to place around the skewer, which will become the neck. And then for the jacket, I'm going to roll a nice thin piece of the black. And I'm going to lay the body and legs onto there so I can work out whereabouts to cut. So I'm going to cut a little bit either side of his legs, which will be like the tail part of his jacket. And then we'll cut a little bit off so he's got a bit to fold over the body on either side. And I'll cut that down the middle. Let's cut a bit of a slant at the bottom and at the top. I'll take that off and cut it properly. If I fold it over, I can do the same on the other side so that it matches. And then at this long bit at the bottom, we're going to cut a few wavy triangles. So it's got a nice torn look to the back of his jacket. Just check that fits. It's a little bit big, so we'll just trim a little bit extra off. It's a little bit better. And then we can push that on in place. Now, if you need to use edible glue or water to stick it on, you can do. Just pull off any extra bits on the shoulder that's sticking out. For the head, I'm taking a round ball. Just check the size before you start working on it. So I'm happy with that size. I'm just going to press in two eye holes with my fingers. And then we're going to press slightly below those eye holes for where the mouth will be. And it'll just push out a tiny bit that will become the nose. So that little bit that we've pushed out, we're just putting two little dints in. You couldn't get the camera quite to focus very well here, so I do apologise. I'm just pushing a slight indent in between sort of the eyes at the top to make him look a bit more like he's frowning. And I'm just deepening those eye sockets now with my Dresden tool. Go a little bit deeper under that brow sort of area. And then we'll make these eyes a bit more defined for the shape of them. We've got a tiny, tiny little ball of black that we're going to push into each of those little nostril marks that we've made. Just make sure they're pushed in nice and tight. And then I'm going to do the same with the eyes. And this time you sort of want more like a semicircle shape in the black to push in the eye socket that we've made. Apologies, I did move him to the edge of the screen and I hadn't realised. Hopefully you can just about see what I'm doing there, pushing in the eyes. And then we've pushed the brow down a little bit more. Now we're going to put a line in all the way across the face. So it's quite a wide smile. And then we'll put some lines going across that long line for the mouth, for his teeth. Then I can push that onto the skewer that I've got. Now if your skewer's too long and it's going to poke out the top of the head, trim it down a little bit. So we'll get his little bow tie ready. So I'm just rolling, or squeezing between my fingers a piece that's pointy at one end and then the fatter end I'm just going to cut some little triangles out of so we get some scruffy edges do the same on the other one and you can twist those pieces around a little bit so they look a little bit wavy and I'm going to push that in place at the base of his neck so for the center of the bow tie I'm going to make a bit of a sort of cat like shaped or cat's head shaped piece so I'll start with a ball and I'm going to pinch in both ears the best I can it's only small so it's not hugely accurate I've just got a rough shape there push that in place then once that's in place I'm gonna push in a little hole for each eye socket and then we want a tiny tiny piece of white I'm just gonna push in those holes I've made oh, I've done one a little bit bigger than the other one that is by accident now for the stripes you can either paint them on but on this particular modeling paste it's very difficult to paint on so I'm gonna make my strips cut them out and stick them on so if I put them in place first then I can trim off the ends to neaten them up if it's too thick you can thin them down a little bit and I'm going to repeat this all over the jacket and the legs 
you might find that you need an edible glue for this to stick it in place. I've also put some stripes on his bow tie and what we want to do next is create a little collar or lapel for around the jacket. So I'm going to do some more little white stripes, just want to be short this time. I've also rolled a piece of my black nice and thin. I'll stick these stripes on first before we cut it to shape. I'm just going to cut that in half and I'm going to lay that against the edge of the jacket just so I can work out whereabouts I want to cut it to. So I'm trimming the edge off that like so. Do the same at the other side. Try and make them match the best we can. And before I add the arms, we'll do a bit of shading on his face. So I've just got black powdered dust. Just mix it with a little bit of water, but you can mix with alcohol. And I'm just brushing this between each of those lines that I've made on his mouth. Just so you can see his mouth a little bit better. Because he's quite top heavy, he wants to fall over. So I'm going to create him a little bit of a base to stand him on. So I've tried to mix a grey in my modelling paste. And I've rolled it out quite thick and chunky. We're going to cut out a gravestone shape from this. So you can do whatever shape you fancy for your gravestone. I've kept mine nice and simple. With my dressing tool, I put a line just slightly in from the edge all the way around. And then let's write RIP on that. And I've just squished a little block for the base that my gravestone's going to stand in. So I've marked around it and I'm cutting a little bit of my modeling paste out so that I can insert my gravestone into there. If you need to use edible glue, you can do, but I'm just pushing the icing on the base around it to hold it in tight. I'm going to do the same then with Jack Skellington. We're going to rest him where we want him to go. Didn't wear his feet sit. And then we can push him in place. The gravestone should help support him. So he shouldn't be able to lean over because of the gravestone. For the arms, I've rolled a nice thin piece of the black. Now it's got a bit of a hint of a blue to it as this black. But that's how it came. I haven't dyed it to this colour. I'm going to cut two arms. Nice and long and thin. And I'm just going to roll slightly in the middle to dint it. So that I can create a bend where the elbow will be. Like that. Let's trim a little bit off the top so that it sits neater against the shoulder. I've already trimmed a bit off the top of the second arm. I've also put a little bit of a dint in the second arm as well. So I'm going to cut out two hands for him. I've got a piece of white. We're just going to trim a little bit off the end. So it's quite blunt looking where I've cut it, but that's fine. It will change shape in a minute. So put a little slice at one side. This will become the thumb. So I'm going to take off a little bit off the end of that thumb. Otherwise it'd be a bit long. I'm just stretching out the fingers a little bit more. Just want a little bit more length on them. And then I'm putting in some little cuts for the fingers. For his bony fingers. And I just trim a little bit extra off that far end of the hand. And we want to change the length of the fingers so some are a little bit longer than the others. So your middle finger wants to be longer. And then we're going to put little dints in now across the hand. So across the base of the fingers, part way up. Anywhere that you would have a bend in your hand, you can put a little line. And I'm actually going to stick this onto the gravestone because we're going to have one of his arms coming down, leaning against this gravestone. So that's going to be my straight arm. I'm going to put my arm above that. Pressing it on tightly onto his shoulder, I've just rested the bottom end of his arm onto the top of his hand. And the second arm, we're going to push onto the other shoulder, push it nice and tight, make sure it's secure. Taking it up to his jacket and then we're going to stick the hand on so his hand is up against his chest. Like that. And then we need to add the white stripes. So the same as we did for the jacket, you're going to do exactly the same on the arms. Do that on both arms. And also I'm going to turn and do the back of him because I hadn't put them on the back earlier. So on the back of his suit jacket and the back of his legs. Like that. There he is all finished. I hope you've enjoyed the video. You can also check out my other Tim Burton style videos, which you can find links for in the description box below. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and leave me a comment below. You can see more of my tutorials by clicking on the images on screen now. If you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button to stay up to date with my future tutorials. There are also links in the description box below where you can find me on Facebook, Instagram and more.